Southern wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that's pretty yet. Oh, wait a minute, you know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. Red snapper is a very good fish. I hope you realize, in fact, red snapper is a real delicacy. A lot of people said putting those oil wells out in the Gulf of Mexico would hurt the fish, but it didn't. In fact, I believe it helped them. Fishermen catch a lot of those red snapper around the rigs, and that makes it possible for us to get our enjoys out of eating those red snapper, I guarantee. I don't ever put anything on the fish when I broil it. I don't want to ruin the flavor of the fish. I'll make a little lemon butter sauce on the side. You don't cook fish a long, long time because it cooks very quickly. This rice salad is wondrous. You put anything in the kitchen in it. Join me in looking back at one of those shows I made for Mississippi Educational Television more than 20 years ago. I hope you enjoy it. I guarantee. Y'all are. I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. When I walked in here, you know, every once in a while I think of a story and I want to tell it. I haven't heard it in a long time and I don't want to forget it. I got a friend who was fishing one day and he was just fishing and fishing and fishing and losing his bait and losing his bait but not catching no fish. And finally the fish started biting but his bait was just about to run out. And he threw out there and he caught a butamus brim and he brought him in there real quick and he said, man, I just wish I had some more bait. And he looked down and there's one of the little garter snake done caught a frog, eek, 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 trying to get away from him, you know? And he grabbed that snake and said, look, I hate to tell you this snake, but I need this frog a lot more than you do. And he held on to the snake and the snake looked so pitimous, he reached underneath his seat there and get a can of that pearl pop with foam on top and just pour some right in that old snake's mouth, turn him loose, put that little frog on his line, -choom, chunk it out there. He's got one of them brim to rat now. And he don't lost his frog, too. And he put him, fix him pretty good, chunk it out there some more. He got another one, man. But he done lost his frog. And he felt something rub on the side of his leg, and he looked down there, and now that snake done caught him another frog, I guarantee. <laughs> Down there on the Gulf Coast, we have some of the best seafood in the world. We got speckled trout and redfish and pompano. But one of my favorites is red snapper. It's got good, firm flesh, nice white meat, and a wonderful flavor, that's for true. And it's not too fishy like some fish. Now, I cook red snapper different from anybody else, I guess, because I don't put anything on my red, red snapper at all. I just get it ready to go. Let me get this arch here without spilling anything. And I did it, I guarantee. And get me something to put the red snapper on, like this right there. But what I'm gonna do is put a little something in this pot I've got here, this black pot. I've got some oleo. I'm gonna add to that the juice of two lemon. It's not going on that red snap before it's cooked, oh no. Let me put this on warm, low. Put that on low. This must not boil. And I'm gonna put a little Lee and Perrin, how you call the uh, Worcestershire sauce. Say about a tablespoonful. That's about a tablespoonful. And I'm gonna put a little olive oil on there, about two tablespoons full of that. I better measure that so that people won't think I'm trying to tell them something that ain't true. There's one, two, run over. That's olive oil. Put that there like that. I'm gonna put a little salt on that too, about a, oh, a teaspoon full of salt. You know, fish got to have salt. That's about a teaspoon full. Let's see if I still got my way of doing that. Yep. There it is. A teaspoonful of salt. 
And we're gonna put a little Louisiana hot sauce on there. We use this on ice cream too, I guarantee. <laughs> now we'll just put a couple of ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk on it. That's enough. That's about that's less than a teaspoon for it. It's not all that much. Now I got that there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let that just never boil. And this is gonna be getting hot while I put my red snapper in the oven. Don't that pretty? That's real pretty, I guarantee. Put that in there like that. Let me put this over and get it a little bit better. First, I'm gonna spray this dish with Pam. If I can find the Pam. Here it is, right where I put it. Spray it with Pam, that's to keep it from stick on the bottom there, because anything worse to get out of a pan is fish what's stuck with it, I guarantee. Red snapper, butamus. I'm gonna cook five little pieces of red snapper in this broiling pan. And I think my oven's on broil, yeah, better be. Got that there. And I'm gonna get this out of my way. This very minute. Now. You notice there's nothing on that fish? Not a thing. Put this in the broiler. Now, it does not take fish very long to cook. So every once in a while, I'll cast my eye on that to be doggone sure that I won't burn them fish. And that's bad. You know, us Cajuns love to fish, and we love to hunt. And I got a friend I've been hunting with for years and years and years down in South Louisiana. And let me tell you right now, he is full bleed Cajun. He ain't like me half bleed, he's full bleed. And uh, he's a, a weekend Catholic. He go to church every Saturday afternoon. And then he go back across the street to Johnny Geach Road and has another little beer or drink, something like that. And he married, about 17 or 16 years ago, he married a beautiful female girl, lady women. <laughs> from way up north, around Shreveport. And this female lady, girl, women, beautiful, fine lady, she is a deep water Baptist. That means she don't even closet drink, you hear? <laughs> but my friend, like I'm told you, full bleed Cajun, he got to have a little sip and a nip every now and then, every day. <laughs> but when they made marriage, she said, oh no. Don't you even come in the same room with me, smelling like a bird to steal it, let alone clam up in bed. And last year, we would hunt duck together down in South Louisiana, and we got a, a camp where there's two bedrooms, and I look in his bedroom there, and I'm, he's in his pajama, fixing to go to bed, and I notice he take what I thought was two capsules, and he chew them up. I said, he's sick, and then I see him stuff something up both nose. <laughs> I said, he's too sick to go in the blind, I better go see about him. I walked around, and I said, my friend, I'm sorry you're sick like this. He said, I'm not sick. I said, oh, yeah, sure, I saw you took them medicine. I saw you stuff something up both nose there. He said, the medicine, what that was? I said, that was capsule. He said, no, that was too lewd and cough drop. And what I stuffed up my nose was Victor Sav. I said, well, you smell like a drugstore. You can't go in. He said, I'm not sick. I said, well, how come you do that then? He said, well, you know my old lady, how she feel about drinking. I said, oh, yeah, everybody know that. He said, well, I found out about 15 years ago that I could took two lewd and cough drop and chew them up and stuff Victor Sav up above my nose and I could drink anything I wanted to. And all she could smell was lewd and cough drop and Victor Sav. <laughs> I said, I say, yeah. I say, yeah, but she ain't here. You say, I know, but you do that 15 years and you become addicted to it, I guarantee. <laughs> Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna have to make some, uh, we're gonna eat them red stuff, but we're gonna make some avocado soup. Now, we don't cook that, no. Avocado soup is cold. Some people call them alligator pad, but you ain't gonna catch no Cajun calling them that, no. Cause you know what, when we say alligator, we think about going out and caught one of them things and getting that meat from that big tail on there because it's real good eating, I guarantee. We don't feel like people do about calling it a shark. Mm-mm. 
let me see some. I'm going to show you an avocado. Let me cut this up here where I can get at it a little bit better. Some people call them alligator pie, like I'm told you. But this is nothing but an avocado. That is, see? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to, to peel one. I'm not going to peel I'm just going to show you how to get to the thing and get that old big seed out of it. You know, it's about uh, better than 50% seed. See there? That old seed. That old seed's got to come out. He's hard to get out. He's slick. So what you do, just throw that knife in there and twist it around. You got him out. Nothing to it. Just like eating lettuce. You see that? We put that there out of the way. Now, avocado soup is served cold. We're going to put this avocado, that two cup of avocado, what I got right there. Man, that's fine. We're going to put this in the blender. Ooh, you kid. <laughs> A teaspoon full of salt. Maybe not quite a teaspoon. Not quite a teaspoon I'm gonna put on that. Now that's not quite a teaspoon. I'm gonna show you that that's not quite a teaspoon. See, lack like quite a little bit being a teaspoon. Get that in there. Then we're gonna put about a cup and a half of chicken stock, or this is chicken broth. It's about the same thing. A chicken stock, I think, tastes a little bit better. We put that on there. Then we're gonna put some Lee and Perrin, Worcestershire. I think what we'll put in there is just one tablespoon full of that, just to be sure we don't put too much. <laughs> Got that? In a dash, one dash of Louisiana hot sauce, right there. <laughs> now, if y'all don't mind, I'm gonna take a look at my flesh. I gotta see how it's doing. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna put on here now is about two cup of buttermilk. Not quite two cup. Put it on there, I got the salt, I got all that on there, what I need to put. Put it like that. I need my spoon. I don't need this, I'm gonna get it out of my way. Put the lid on it, don't you dare forget and not put that lid on there. <laughs> and you want to liquefy this. Is what we're gonna do to liquefy this right now. Get after it there. It's liquefying. I guarantee that liquefying. Ooh, boy. Let's see how it look. C'est magnifique. Ha, 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 guarantee. You know what? That soup made. What I'm gonna do right now is find a bowl to put that on. And I think I got it right here. Yeah, here it is, right here, where I put it. I'm gonna put that on this bowl. Not that pretty? That's delicious, too. Now, if you don't eat it like I'm gonna do very shortly, what you got to do is put it on ice and keep it there. I'm gonna put this in the sink, it'd just be in my way if I don't. Put this over here. Clean it up after a while. Put this down here. Man. I'm gonna put this on the table so I can get at it real good. Now we got the soup. <laughs> Avocado soup. Yeah. Now. Look here, this nearly boiled on me, you know it. Whew. I don't want that to happen, no. Got to put that on warm. Nearly boiled. Came close, close, close. I hadn't looked there. We got the entree. Now we got the soup. Now we got to have some starch to go with that. And what we're gonna do right now is make a rice salad. And I know us Cajuns love rice. Now this is cooked rice. Got that right there, like that. Now I got a bunch of stuff to go on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. That's about uh, two cups of rice. We cooked two cups of rice and it made that much rice. And what we're gonna put on there is a cup of onion, chop up real pretty, green onion. This is a cup of chopped dill pickle. 
put that rascal in there right now. Hmm. That's smelling good already. This is a cup of chopped sweet pickle. Right here. Put that on there too. Right here, we got a cup of sari. Sari, we are gonna put that on there. We got a cup of chopped green pepper, bell pepper. Don't that pretty? And we chop up some olive and pimento, what was mixed together. We chop that up and we put that on there too. That's a cup, one cup of that. And this is about a cup and a half of chop up hard boiled egg, which we boil for 20 minutes so it'd be digestible. <laughs> a baby can eat a egg. Now I'm gonna mix this up just a least little bit here, you know, get it mixed up. Just a least little bit, that's pretty. That's gonna look pretty all the time. And we'll mix a little sauce to go on that because that's not quite good enough, juicy enough for me there yet. Whoo, I guarantee. Look at that. That's fine. Now, I'm gonna take this bowl right here. This is salad dressing. And the reason I use salad dressing instead of mayonnaise is salad dressing will keep a little longer than mayonnaise. Off of ice, I'm talking about. I'm going to use about a cup of salad dressing. It's about a cup in there. And this is Durkees. I'm going to use about three or four tablespoons full of that. Come on out of there. Now you're going. That's the old Durkees. This is just plain old yellow mustard I got right here. Before I do it, let me look at my fish. Hold steady. Ooh, you rascal. Oh, looking better all the time, I guarantee. This plain old yellow mustard. Now, if I was making this for myself down home, I would make my own mustard and do it, but I'm gonna put two, three tablespoons full of yellow mustard in that. Now, I'm gonna put a little cayenne pepper on that. Not much, just a little bit, you know, it ain't much. <laughs> Got that on there. I'm gonna stir it up. Mix it good. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in there to give it a little more body, how you call it. Look prettier, taste better. Now, we got that like that. Stir it up good. And you got to have a little tartness with this, so what we use is wine vinegar, wine vinegar. We don't let it sleep in it overnight, we just put a few dashes of wine vinegar. There we go. Wine vinegar. And we stir that into this, and it kind of whitens it up a little bit. Makes it a little looser. And the first thing you know, we got it mixed up, and we put it on the rice salad. Now you know that that's pretty. Let me move this out of my way. Yeah. Now I'm gonna mix this up just at least a little bit. You know, when you make this, if you let it sit overnight, it's even better. Like potato salad. Potato salad always better the next day. Now, let me mix it just at least a little bit more. I don't know how I do that, but I got just the right amount of juice on that. You know that? Let me check my fish and we'll come back to that. Ooh, I just turned you off, you rascal, you. Be sure that nothing more happens to you. Now I'm gonna mix this a little bit more because it's not quite mixed good enough. And let me tell you right now, this is fine stuff. You like potato salad, you like rice salad. That's for true. And I haven't left a thing out of this. I want you to know, I put everything I could find in the kitchen in it. Went next door and borrowed four things. And that always make it taste more better. That's for true. <laughs> yeah, and now, I'm gonna take this and put it over on the table. 
more now. Right here. And while I'm over here, I'm going to put a little of this wonderful avocado soup in a cup. So it'll be ready when I get ready. Man, that'll look good. That is good, too. I want you to know that is good. Put that right there, like that. Put these over here, like that. Ha! Now, let me stir this. I don't want this to boil. Can't afford to let this boil. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put my fish over here, because it's dead. You know, it doesn't take fish long to cook, no. Fish cooks real quick. It doesn't take you long. Oh, that's pretty. Now you're wondering what in the world are you gonna do? You ain't got nothing on it. Look, old dry looking fish. I'm gonna put it right here, what I'm gonna do before it burn me. Blow this oven. Now, right now, I'm gonna get one piece of this fish out and put it on this plate with this spatula. You see that? Ha. This come out just exactly right. Let me loosen this up. So when I do want to take it out, I can. Yeah. Mm. This is where you put your seasoning on your fish. After it's done, after it's put into the plate that the people are gonna eat off of. That's what you did. You see that? That's lemon butter, Worcestershire, a little hot sauce, and that's all. Isn't that fine? I guarantee. I'm gonna turn this off because I don't want that to boil. Now, get me a little rice salad on my plate. Yes. Just a little, not much. Hmm. I've got everything I need. Soup, starch, got it all right there. And now, I'm gonna sit down here and tell you a story. Oh, first of all, I'm gonna pour a little wine. You know, you know, this is red wine. Some people say you're supposed to have white wine with fish, but you're supposed to drink the kind of wine you like. That's the kind of wine you're supposed to drink. Let me tell you, I got a friend who lived in Opelousas, Louisiana. And he got a job up north, way up north in, in Detroit. Now, how he find that place, I don't know. <laughs> but he get a job driving him automobile trailing transport truck up there. And he get a job with the understood that every two weeks he gonna get to go back through Opelousas, Louisiana on the way to Beaumont in Houston, Texas, call, hauling them cataract automobiles, you know. Gonna get to go through there and see his wife and 11 cheering what he's got. Well, the fella forgot to took into consider, he got to unlearn him how to drive Cajun style and that take two weeks. Then he got to learn him how to drive Yankee style, that take two more weeks. In the first trip he get, don't get to Beaumont and Houston or go to Miami, Florida, and way out full road map trying to get a shortcut to Miami through Opelousas, but he don't made it from Detroit. So, he come back then, he walk up to the foreman, would hire him, he say, how come you told me that damn lie? The foreman say, which one? <laughs> he say, you know which one, you told me every two weeks I'm gonna get to go through Opelousas and see my old lady and all them cheering. It had been six weeks since I've been home and I'm gonna go something that they ain't gonna know me. They're gonna ask her, hey, who that is, mama? She gonna say, I don't know. <laughs> well, the foreman say, I'm awful sorry about that. I, I guarantee I didn't meant to to broke my word or anything like that, but you know how it is. We got to did things like we supposed to did them now, and I got a trip that's gonna go out in about four hours, and I'm so sorry you too tired I took it out. He said, who say I'm tired? I'm not tired. I'll be glad they took that trip out there. I'm gonna go through up loose on the way to Beaumont and Houston. He said, that's right. He said, okay, you can took it out, but you go get 40 wink, because I don't want you to be too tired when you did that. He said, all right. So we're gonna get 22 wink. He don't want to miss nothing. He can get back there and he get on that trailing truck there. He said, Appaloosa. Boy, here I come. Hmm. 
Mm, old lady, I know you and them cheering. Gonna be glad to see me, I guarantee. And he do just fine with them trailing truck till they get about, oh, 40 miles from Opelousas. 10 p.m. in the nighttime, man. And blinkity, 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 them flick, 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 them headlight flick plumb out on him. And he pull on the shoulder of the road, and he get down from them truck, and he go across the road, and he look back at the truck on the shoulder of the road, he say, this Cajun snake bit by a whole basket full of snake. I'll tell you for true. Here I am, got to wait till daylight, and they done put me a day behind. I'm gonna drive through Appaloosa and just wave bye-bye when I pass. And this is bad. And he said, wait just a minute. He'd look over there again, and he top that top automobile on top is faced the same way with him. He said, let me go see. Well, he climbed up there, and he turned him headlight on. Whew, he could see a mile and a half down the road. <laughs> he said, I wonder how come that safety man didn't talk about that. They get back on them trucks, say, Apple says, whoo, boy, here I come. Old lady and you cheering, gonna wake up there, because you're gonna be glad to see me, I guarantee. <laughs> He's not going very far. Before he meet an automobile, brought himself up the road. And get about a half mile from him, and he'd leave the road, boogity, 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 across the cow pasture. And he'd drive up there and brought himself through a dead still, reach down, pull his emergency broke so that truck won't roll. He'd run out there across that field, say, you hurt my friend, huh? That'd say, no. He said, what happened? You, you broke, didn't work? He said, nothing stopped. Them. But your steering didn't bro broke? No, the student didn't broke. He said, what in the world happened? He said, well, me, I would've brought myself up the road, and you, you brought yourself down, and me, I figure if you're half as wide as you as tall, I better give you plenty of room, I guarantee. 